can you check i think it's uh, So, yeah, good afternoon. So, what did we discuss in our last lecture? So, so we analyzed the regret first, explore, then commit algorithm, right? So, how did we analyze? So, just to quickly recap that. So we wrote for the special case of two arms and what we did was we calculated let's say you played for M let's say you played for M, uh, exploration, you have played, explored each arm M time. Then we know that with high probability the true mean and the sample mean, sample average mean will be within minus epsilon to plus epsilon, right? So then what did we do? We defined something called as a good event and a bad event, where the good event was, uh, because these bonds are true with some probability, right? So with some probability, those bonds could be wrong. So we defined good event as the event where both these arms uh, intervals are satisfied, and bad event as the event where at least one of these arms uh, intervals are wrong, right? So if one of the intervals, uh, like if a bad event occurs, we just gave up uh, and said that at most we'll incur a regret of capital T. And uh, so what is the expect? So capital T into the probability that bad event happens. So we wanted the bad event probability to negate the effect of T, right? Because we had T into something, which is the worst case regret in the bad event. We wanted to multiply that with a good uh, enough probability to offset this effect. So that's why we have chosen the probability of bad event to be 1 by T, order of 1 by T. So that the effect of the bad event gets cancelled out. And then uh, when we are looking at the good event, good event doesn't mean that we pick the best term, right? Is good event same as picking the best term? So good event just means that our confidence intervals are correct. So even though our confidence intervals are correct, we can still uh, think the bad arm as the best term, right? Why? Because, where did I draw that picture? Did I draw somewhere? Yeah. So if the intervals are not overlapping, then we'll pick uh, the right arm as the best arm. But uh, if the intervals are overlapping, there is a possibility that uh, we misunderstand the bad arm as a best arm. So, but the overlap will occur only when delta, the difference between the true means of these two arms is less than two epsilon. Right? So when delta is less than two epsilon, what is the, uh, this is the worst case, right? Because in this case, the worst case, when they are not overlapping, the regret is zero. When they are overlapping, the worst case regret is uh, two epsilon into capital T. Because the worst case is delta per each slot. So they're totally T slots. So two epsilon into capital T is the worst that we can have. So the good event uh, regret is upper bounded by two epsilon into T. And so in the, and there is an exploration regret and exploitation regret also, right? So we have explored for the first M times, since we had only two arms, we explored the bad arm M times, the good arm M times, and we won't incur any regret for exploring the good arm. So the only regret is in the exploration phase is M, at most M, assuming uh, the worst scenario, uh, M, 
and the remaining regret is 2t into epsilon like t into 2 epsilon so this is a trade off between these two terms like m as m increases the exploration regret increases but the exploitation regret decreases because as m increases we get good and good estimates of our arms um, uh, true reward true mean re rewards so we just uh, did some uh, we just chose m such that the trade off is balanced so you could either have uh, done it properly by finding the minimum m or or m which minimizes this regret or i have heuristically just uh, taken those two terms to be equal and we got this as order of uh, we wanted m to be order of t power 2 by 3 into log of log t power 1 by 3 then we know how to calculate the final regret because this bad event is at most contributing a regret of 4 and the good event is contributing a regret of 2m because we kept these two to be equal. So it's like order of, uh, the total regret is order of t power 2 by 3 log t power 1 by 3, right? So this is clear for everyone, right? So someone was checking the video, it was coming, right? So I think in my over enthusiasm, I wrote this exercise wrongly. So, I think this regret is not for ETC, but uh, for another algorithm called UCB. Please uh, correct this one. Uh, I'll give you the regret for uh, the ETC. When delta is known, uh, there is a different regret for ETC. I'll give you that in an exercise maybe, like in a problem set. But please correct this one. Okay, and after that, I've added a few more exercises and uploaded this on Hello ATK. You can just check that out. Uh, we'll discuss that today. It's called Upper Contents Phone. Okay, so this is a detailed recap of last lecture. This is today's right? Okay, so uh, let's start right. So And in today's lecture, uh, what we'll do is I'll discuss a uh, couple of algorithms which uh, will have a better regret than uh, ETC. ETC had roughly order of t power 2 by 3, right? Into some log t power 1 by 3. Uh, like uh, order of t is the worst regret that you can have. Order of t power 2 by 3 is better than that. But... Uh, can we have order of root t into log t or something? So we'll try to get, instead of t power 2 by 3, can we get t power 1 by 2? Is what we'll try in this class. And so before that, I'll just uh, write a couple of algorithms. Uh, epsilon ZD we have already seen, right? I'll just uh, state uh, the regret uh, bound for epsilon ZD. I'll not go on through that, but I'll just state that. This will have a similar regret, the performance as that of ETC. And then we'll discuss an algorithm called successive elimination algorithm. Then uh, we'll discuss another algorithm called UCB, which is by far the most popular algorithm, which is called upper confidence bound algorithm. And we'll, I just will do the regret analysis for only one of these. I'll do the regret analysis for uh, UCB.
this is what we'll discuss today so do you remember what was the epsilon degree algorithm anyone remembers epsilon degree algorithm Hmm. Yeah. So at any round, uh, you uh, you have some estimates of every arm. You play the arm with uh, which has the highest sample average with the probability one minus epsilon, and with probability epsilon, you close your eyes and pick any arm at random and play that arm. So that with some little probability we are exploring, and with one minus epsilon probability we are uh, exploiting our knowledge of the sample averages okay so So this epsilon uh, can be a time-varying uh, number. So for every round t, you can have a different uh, probability to explore. So initially, maybe when uh, you don't know anything, uh, you don't know much about the averages, maybe you can explore with a higher probability. But as time goes, uh, your, con your confidence on your uh, sample averages will keep increasing, right? As time increases, uh, you would have sampled each sum enough number of times. So you can reduce your exploration. Initially, when you do not know much about the arms, maybe you can keep epsilon t a little higher. But as t increases, you can decrease epsilon t. Because uh, when you have a large number of samples, you need not explore so much because you already have good uh, bounds on your, uh, how close your true means are to your uh, sample means. It makes sense. Initially, you explore a lot. But as time progresses, you exploit a lot because you have done enough exploration. Okay. And I think you can start uh, from beginning itself because anyway, the exploration will keep happening at every time. Yeah, I, I here both the things keep happening. Um, Simultaneously. So let's say all you think all of them have zero mean or something. So you pick one arm at random, or you pick one of them as the best. If let's say there are two arms, if at some point both the arms have the same sample mean, what will you do? You have to break ties somehow, right? And call one of them the best sample average, the other, or you can play each of them with probability half. Maybe the first round you can just explore. With probability 1 minus epsilon t, you play the best arm. With probability epsilon t, you pick any arm at random. So that means each arm will have a probability of epsilon t by k. So with some probability epsilon t, you are deciding that you will explore. So when you decide you want to explore, there are k arms, let's say. Each arm will have a probability of 1 by k being chosen. So that means each arm is being explored with a probability of epsilon t by k. So this is the algorithm. Algorithm is clear. And if we choose, uh, so based on our uh, previous understanding of, uh, 
so explore then commit algorithm so what did we understand there like if you uh, if you have roughly explored uh, order of t power 2 2 by 3 times like m was t power 2 roughly like order of t power 2 by 3 right so if you have explored roughly order of t power 2 by 3 times uh, then uh, you can exploit thereafter right so so roughly what you can do is uh, so if you set epsilon t i'm just being very uh, hand wavy and just giving you an idea of why this term works so if you just set your epsilon t of this order like roughly like this and then uh, up to time t roughly how many times you'll explore on an average so in each round you are exploring with this much probability right so let's say there are totally, let's say at some round t, how many times would, have, would you have explored on an average? t power 2 by 3, right? Because in each time slot, you are exploring with this much probability. So roughly by the time t, you would have explored uh, t power 2 by 3 times. Like t into t power minus 1 by 3. It's a very hand wavy argument, but I'm just giving you an intuition. Because each time slot you are exploring with that much probability, let's say, and out of those t rounds, roughly t into t power 1 minus 3 times you would have explored, which is like uh, t power 2 by 3. So like all the t is time varying and all that, I'm just giving you a rough uh, picture. So, so this will ensure that. Uh, Let's this will ensure roughly you have t power 2 by 3 times exploration. So, if you do a proper analysis, uh, you can show that you can show the following. If epsilon t equal to t power minus 1 by 3 into k log t power 1 by 3 is chosen, then epsilon greedy algorithm is regret. Order okay. So if you if you do a proper analysis, we can prove this. Like the regret will be of the order of uh, t power two by three into log t power one by three. Okay. I'll not do that, uh, but uh, roughly that's the idea, right? No, exploring means you are picking an arm at random, right? So if you, uh, let's say, if k, k into, uh, if each arm is played roughly like t power 2 by 3 times, that means the concentration bound will be good enough for you to explore it, right? So that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever samples you get, you will update the corresponding mean. So if you choose ARM A, you will update the sample average of ARM A. Whatever sample you get, you will update that average of that particular ARM. So whatever ARM you play, you will update the sample of that ARM. Uh, why? K is... Like last time we did not analyze for... We analyzed for K equal to 2, I think, right? I think we took two ARMs case and analyzed. And these are all in order sense we are talking about. 
and i think i've given that as an exercise for the k arm case the i don't remember what was the bound i think it's is the same you get t power 2 by 3 into order of k log t power 1 by 3 k will be inside now. okay so any doubts still now like algorithm is clear to everyone so whatever sample you take you will update the sample average of that arm right okay so maybe i'll uh, discuss the ucb algorithm so so the ucb is nothing but uh, after playing some number of samples after obtaining some number of samples of an arm uh, we are confident about uh, how far that true mean will be from the sample average right we have some interval right so if uh, we have some interval like this like mu bar a let's say if we know that um, mu of a belongs to mu bar a minus epsilon t so let's say the true mean of a particular arm uh, belongs to some confidence interval right so we just call this as the ucb this upper term the right the second we call that as the ucb this we call as the lcb generally okay and i am writing the epsilon as a function of t because uh, as the number of samples keep changing your confidence interval also keeps changing right because as t changes the number of times you would have played arm a changes right if the number of samples that you have about arm a changes your confidence interval also changes right if you have a lot of samples you can be your confidence interval shrinks if you have very less number of samples then your confidence interval will be large because you are not sure you cannot tell very precisely what is the mean true mean right so so just uh, for understanding so let's say you want to say that uh, you want to say that the probability of an arm a belongs to Oh, right. That's right. So let's assume that, uh, as usual, the rewards are between zero and one. The rewards are between zero and one. So if we want uh, to say this, if you want to say this, uh, what is that? what is the relation between epsilon and delta from whatever we studied <laughs> so at time t we would have played arm a how many times nt of a that's what the notation we use right nt of a denotes uh, number of times we have played arm a till time t so can you write Write the relation between uh, delta and epsilon t from whatever bounds we have learned. Can use like assume that the rewards between belong to zero and one, and use opting inequality and tell me what should be the relation between delta and epsilon t. Can you write epsilon t as a function of delta and nt of a? You you learned opting inequality, right? What was that? Yeah, just can you just use that and tell me what will be epsilon t of a in terms of delta and nt of a?
Um, if you want, you can take this two delta just for your convenience. No, all of you remember Hopding inequality? Yeah. So the Hopding inequality was uh, Hopding inequality will have this term two into right. You have something like this for delta. Where? No, here B minus A is by two is two. M is not total time. What is M? M is number of samples of the DOM you have. But uh, you're not in a mood to solve this. Have you solved this already? What is epsilon T of A? Log? Two? Okay. So everyone is comfortable doing this? So you have to just equate this term to delta, that's all, where m is nt of a. Because how many samples of m a we have at time t? We have nt of a. OK. So similar to, uh, so at every time, you have some confidence interval based on how many samples you have so far. So after time t, you can say that uh, your true mean belongs to uh, the sample mean by at most this much with uh, probability true delta. Okay. So just like uh, uh, last time, here also we'll. So this UCB algorithm, maybe before I go to the analysis, the UCB algorithm is the following. So the green. The algorithm was like you play the arm with the, let's say at time t, you want to decide which arm to play. What does the greedy algorithm tell us? You find the sample averages of all the arms till time t minus 1. And you play which arm? You play this arm, right? These are the sample averages of all the arms till time t minus 1. and you play the best term according to the sample averages. But uh, this is like only exploiting. So you can easily construct an example where the uh, regret grows linearly in time. So uh, I'll give that as an exercise. It's a very easy thing. You, if you just think uh, for a, some time, you will be able to construct an example where the regret grows linearly in time if you use greedy algorithm. So we want some exploration also to be there, right? So one way to uh, add exploration is instead of just relying on point estimate, this is a point estimate of the mean, right? So in the explore first then commit algorithm also, we just use uh, the sample estimates to decide which arm to play. We did not uh, uh, see how much content are we about that estimate in making the decision, right? After some after some time, we played uh, whichever arm had the highest average sample average. We did we just looked at the sample estimate the average. So instead of that, if we look at the 
interval contents interval maybe you can do something better right because uh, my sample average might be let's say something but if my contents interval is very large that means i am not very sure about that but if my contents interval is very small that means i am more sure about that correct so why don't i make use of this information also because at every time my hopping inequality is giving me some contents interval right because uh, after every time i can at any time see i can calculate this interval right because i know how many times uh, i have played my arm each arm how many times i have played i know so at every time i can keep an interval like this and decide based on that what i do is another thing but all that i'm saying is just don't go based on the sample average but make use of some more information which you have which is the confidence interval right so what the ucb algorithm does is uh, the ucb algorithm if i want to write it so this is play arm because till time uh, till time t minus 1 you have the sample averages uh, at time t at round t play arm um, play this arm okay so what is this telling so this is uh, this is like this uh, thing is telling to play arm which has the highest ucb okay so every arm has some ucb right with depending on how many times it has been played so you play the arm with the highest ucb that's the algorithm okay why does it make sense uh, this is called this paradigm is called optimism in the face of uncertainty okay so you are not very sure about what is the true what is the uh, true mean what you are doing is you are being optimistic and seeing what is the best possible true mean for this sum this is my mu bar t of a is the sample average that i have at most how good the true mean can be yeah i'll, I'll come to that part uh, we have to choose delta carefully so that we have some good regret analysis i'll come to that part but uh, let's say there is we fix some delta in this case what are we doing mu bar t of a is the sample mean that we have about our mean but we don't know what is the true mean but we are assuming that our confidence intervals are correct with high probability right so at best what will be my true mean if, if my confidence intervals are correct at best my true mean will be mu bar t minus of a plus epsilon t of epsilon t minus 1 of a right this is the best my true mean can this is the best value that my true mean can take according to my confidence intervals so you are being optimistic in the sense in when you are uncertain you are being optimistic you are just assuming okay this is the best that this arm can have so every arm has something the best possible mean you are just playing the arm which has the highest mean and yeah for every time at every time we are calculating an uh, confidence interval for each arm yeah yeah so the best possible true mean of an arm according if our confidence intervals are correct is this so we are just playing the arm with the highest uh, uh, predicted or highest possible mean okay so yeah we have to choose del uh, like these confidence intervals are correct with high probability right uh, with probability to delta if delta is small enough these confidence intervals are correct so again we'll do a careful regret analysis where we'll say let's assume our confidence intervals are wrong so what is the worst case regret that we can get let's assume our confidence intervals are correct then we'll assume then we'll cal calculate what is the regret so roughly if our confidence intervals are correct this is the best uh, true possible true mean for any arm 
so why does it make sense uh, you can look at this term if you look at this epsilon term mm, so this this is like balancing the trade off between exploitation and exploration this term is uh, exploiting right in the sense that uh, it is giving preference to a norm which has a highest sample average the first term and what is the second term doing when will the second term uh, when will the second term of an arm be very high when nt is small right because epsilon t is inversely proportional to root nt right so if uh, nt of a particular arm is very small then epsilon t will be very high so the second term the epsilon plus epsilon t is favoring arms which have been played very less if the arm has been played very less number of times that means we are not very sure about the sample average how good it is right so we want to play it a little more time to get better confidence intervals is it making sense so if an arm is played two less number of times will that term will contribute for its playing if an arm has very high sample average that also is contributing here so it's like balancing between the exploration and exploitation the first term is trying to exploit the second time is encouraging exploration since uh, if nt is small we are encouraging it to be played more okay so this is a high level idea of uh, ucb so you are balancing the trade off between exploration and exploitation where one term is uh, uh, contributing to an arm if it is sample average is already good the other term is saying if your arm has not been played so many times it will be encouraged to play okay and it makes sense right if you all if you have already played the arm a lot of times then the sample average is very close to the true mean so you need not give it too much benefit of doubt you are mostly certain about uh, the sample average being close to the true mean so this is the high level idea now we'll go and analyze this algorithm okay we'll choose delta carefully and analyze our algorithm okay so as usual i uh, will uh, do the following we will first uh, uh, divide our thing into two cases where our confidence intervals are correct our confidence intervals are wrong okay so and uh, we'll do uh, in the explore then commit algorithm we have made use of the confidence intervals only at one place in the analysis at mth round at m thrown after m explorations we have compared the uh, sample averages of both the arms so at that point of comparison our confidence interval should be correct so it doesn't matter how the confidence intervals were before m and after m we are not even computing sample average we are picking to one arm and we are playing the arm so our confidence interval should be correct at that particular point where we are comparing the two arms right after m rounds we are comparing right in the explore then commit we explore each arm m times then we are comparing the sample average of arm 1 and arm 2 which are has highest mean so we are doing only one comparison that comparison we assume whether it's correct or wrong that's a good event and bad event right here what are we doing in every time at every time we have a confidence interval so our confidence interval at time 1 might be correct at time 2 it could be wrong because at every time it's correct with some high probability that means at every time it can fail with some probability correct so what we will do is we'll define uh, a good event as the event where the confidence intervals are correct in every time slot from t equal to 1 to t we define good event as the event where the confidence intervals are correct for every arm at every time if you have t t time slots at every time slot we have some confidence interval for every arm we want the confidence intervals to be correct always that's what we define as a good event is it clear good event is uh,
for all t and for all arms a mu of a belongs to mu t bar of a minus epsilon t of a comma mu t bar of a plus epsilon t of a so we define good event as this event that is for every arm in every round our confidence interval is correct is it clear the definition is clear so now what we'll do is how what will be our regret uh, how we can write our regret as the regret of all the arms if i call delta of a is the suboptimality of arm a then my regret is this right n n capital t of a is the uh, total number of times i played arm a and delta of a is uh, the difference between the true mean of arm a and the best arm right so this is my regret right because every arm how many ever times we play the arm will pay regret of delta of a into that many times mm. correct everyone is fine with this delta a is the difference between the best term true mean and arm is true mean nt of a is uh, total number of times arm a played till time t fine so now what we'll try to do is we'll try to bound expected we want the expected regret we want to bound on the expected regret we'll try to bound expected nt of a okay and we'll get some analysis then okay so let's try to understand what will be the how many times a norm will be played if you use ucb algorithm how many times a particular arm will be played okay so so we can divide this into two cases like good event and bad event cases so in the bad event case we'll just uh, give up and say what is the worst case that can happen how much nt of a can be at most for a particular arm a what is the worst like uh, highest uh, number for nt of a t t right so for the bad event we have this t into we want some number which will negate this effect right so what number i should choose here 1 by t is okay right the probability that my bad event uh, should be less than or equal to 1 by t so what is bad event at least in one at least in one time in time slot at least one arm should go wrong right so what is the probability can we calculate the probability probability of bad event if you try to use union bound like we know the probability that at a particular for a particular arm in a particular time span the probability that the true means does not lie in the interval is how much 2 delta right for a particular arm in a particular given time slot that's what we did right here this is at a particular time this one this is at a particular time t for a particular arm a right so 
this is true delta so if i want this to be uh, so if at least one of them should be wrong means you can take union bound right like union over all t and all a then this will be uh, two delta into capital t for because we are taking union over all t right into number of forms so it will be kt into two delta right because there are t time slots and k arms so there are kt events like this right for every time t we have this for every arm a we have this so totally there are kt such things for a time t equal to one for k, k such probabilities at time t equal to two we have k such probabilities so totally we have kt so the probability of bad arm uh, sorry the probability of bad event is what less than or equal to 2 delta into kt right i'm not writing this all but you understood what i said No, I did not get that. I'm just asking what will be a good number to keep there. No, we have to set delta. We will set whatever we want. So you said such that it won't cross one by t. Right? So the probability of bad event by union bound, I'll write this as, uh, I'll call this equation one by union bound and equation one these two will give us the probability of bad event is less than or equal to kt into two delta right so generally uh, we can assume that k is uh, less than or equal to t because we should have at least chance to explore each arm once right so we can assume k is greater than or equal to t, right? So we can just write it less than or equal to t square into two, two delta because k is greater than or equal, less than or equal to t. Because t should be at least as good as uh, how many arms we have, right? We should be able to explore each arm once. Anyway, that's an assumption we are just taking. Assume t is greater than or equal to k. So then we get this, right? So now, what uh, what you want in the can now can you tell me what delta will you prefer? One by t square is also okay, right? Uh, anyway, order of we, the constant regret will not bother us. So if I take uh, t square two delta equal to let's say what do I want? this to be equal to I forgot. Hmm? 1 by t okay so we need t cube huh? okay. so delta should be like uh, 1 by t to cube or something no the worst case we want it to negate right this is the probability of bad event right This is not regret. This is how many times you know, we can play. In the worst case, you can play it three times, right? So you want that? That is a probable. How many times you can play a bad? Uh, you can play an army when the bad event happens. So if the bad event happens, uh, at most you can play any arm t times. There are only t chances. Into the probability of bad event, we want the probability of bad event to be such that the t effect gets cancelled out so we want to choose the probability of bad event to be order of, order of 1 by t so what is the probability of bad event it's like t squared 2 delta so you can safely take delta equal to 1 by t t cube so that the probability of bad event becomes uh, 1 by t correct Okay, so so let's fix any any delta of this order should be okay. 
even t power 1 by 4 does not harm us like delta equal to t power 1 by 4 also we can use right uh, and then the bad event will be t into 1 by t square which is like order of 1 by t right so i think uh, different books use different numbers maybe some books use 1 by t power 4 for delta so it's just the parameter which you can choose you, you should just know how you are choosing that after that you can choose whatever c you want whatever power you want because t power 4 or t power 3 does not uh, affect you much because uh, how many times we are playing an arm uh, like uh, like you get one by delta kind of thing right you get one by delta kind of thing log of one by delta so whether it's t power one by four or t power one by three sorry one by t power three it will just be some c into log one by t c into log t for you mm -hmm. because that's why, because that's why the exponential bound is helping us. Like we, our Hopping inequality is giving an exponentially decreasing bound in number of samples, right? So here we can happily uh, assume the probability of bad event to be one by t power four or one by t cube or whatever, and still be happy with it. Okay. Hmm. So now that you understood this. So maybe I'll just uh, take this to be so we want the probability of bad event to be less than or equal to 1 by t. So we choose so delta equal to and then two t cube. Okay. So, so now, what is the UCB algorithm? If you choose substitute this delta, if you substitute this delta in epsilon t, what will we get? Right. So maybe just to keep expressions look simpler, I'll just take this to be two by t. Okay. Which is like two. So 3 log root of 3 log t by 2 into nt by a. Correct? So generally it's root c log t by nt. Okay? Like different algorithms will choose different c's. So you can think that UCB algorithm is uh, mu bar t plus root c log t by nt. Okay? Like here c came to be 3 by 2 for us. But uh, if you take t power 1, 1 by t power 4, maybe you'll get another c. Okay? Okay, so, so now we can simply forget about the bad event case because we already taken care of that bad event and just concentrate on the good event. Okay, so what what is that we are interested in proving? We are interested in proving that uh, NT of A is how many times an arm A is placed, right? So if we want to roughly prove that if an arm is very bad, it won't be played too many times. That means we want nt of a to be dependent on delta of a, inversely dependent on delta of a. If delta of a is very large, that means it's a bad arm, right? It's a very suboptimal arm. Delta of a is the difference between the true mean and the uh, true mean of the best arm and the true mean of the arm a, right? If delta of a is very large, that means it's a bad arm, very bad arm. 
so we want to prove something like this nt of a is inversely proportional to delta of a right we'll try to prove this okay when the good event happens because we now need to worry only about the good event right so let's see when will a arm a be played when will a particular arm let's say at time t an arm a is played when when do we play arm a at time t when mu bar t of a plus Huh. mu bar t minus of 1 of a plus epsilon t minus 1 of a is is the best among all the other arms in particular it should be greater than the uh, true mean all like uh, best arm also right best arms ucb also right because it's greater than all the other arms in particular it is greater than this arm also so this is a necessary condition right for playing arm a hmm. right uh, everyone agrees with this when you are playing arm a in a given uh, time slot t then this should definitely be satisfied otherwise you won't play arm a right if this is not true then arm a would not have been played because we are playing the arm with the highest ucb correct now we are also assuming our confidence intervals are correct right because this is a good event so what can we uh, can we want now a bond between uh delta and epsilon just like how we got a bond between delta and epsilon in the last class so we got a bond right delta is less than 2 epsilon or something in the last class so similar to that we want a bond between epsilon and uh, delta and anyway epsilon is remains so if we can bond if we can get a relation between delta and epsilon then you can get a relation between nt and delta right so now what we want we want this to be uh, so we know that uh, what is the best uh, like if this is uh, mu bar t minus 1 of a what is the worst uh, uh, value that like we want to upper bound delta so if we want to upper bound delta what we should do we should look at the case where uh, this is a this is a bad so your mu mu true mean of arm a will be at least how much if this is if this is your ucb of arm a what will be the true mean of arm a yeah so we know that the mu mu of a is greater than or equal to mu bar t minus 1 of a plus sorry this is minus right
Yeah. Sorry, I got a little confused. So, uh, this is true, right? So this is true. So if you just uh, uh, use this and write mu of a here, we'll get this right. Mu of a plus two epsilon t of a. Is this correct? Because mu of a that means uh, mu of a plus two times that is greater than or equal to. Like if you just use this, we'll get that, right? Uh, am I confusing you? Huh? So maybe I'll just start with this. So this everyone is comfortable, right? This is uh, because our we are in the good event. That means our mu mu of a is at least this much, correct? Because mu of a belongs to mu bar minus epsilon to mu bar plus epsilon. So this is correct. Then what can we say about this? Mu bar just add two epsilon on both the sides. Then what will we get? Correct. I'm just adding two epsilon on both the sides. Okay. Then uh, th this is true for any arm, but what is uh, at equal to a, right? At equal to a means what should this this be greater than or equal to this term? This term should be greater than or equal to mu bar t minus 1 of a star plus epsilon t minus 1 of a star because that arm is being played. That means it has the highest UCB in this round. So that UCB of that arm will be greater than or equal to the UCB of even the best arm. Right? And this should be greater than or equal to what? Mu of a star, right? Because our mu of a star is upper bound mu of a star is less than or equal to the UCB of a star, right? Because of the good event. So the last inequality is fine. It's just that it's just saying that mu mu of a star is less than or equal to the mu of mu bar of a plus epsilon t minus one. That's Everyone is fine with these arguments. I can repeat if some of you are confused. Now, this is just the confidence interval of A star. Mu of A star belongs to what? Mu bar minus epsilon to mu bar plus epsilon. That is mu bar mu of A is less than or equal to mu bar plus epsilon. Like mu of A will be less than or equal to mu of A bar plus epsilon, right? Mu bar of a plus epsilon. Not clear? Okay. All that I use here is just the good, e good event of this is this column. The good event of this column. Good event on A. And this follows the fact that we are playing a t equal to a, right? I can write that. If you are not clear, you can think later. Okay, so so then did we get any bound on delta of a? 
Hmm? What did we get? Delta of A, which is nothing but delta of A equal to mu of A star minus mu of A is less than or equal to 2 epsilon T minus 1 of A. Correct? So what is it telling us? Delta of A is less than or equal to 2 times uh, root 3 by 2 log t. That's all. Uh, by nt of A. Correct? Because that's how it, we have chosen our nt minus 1 of A. Correct? So, what does it tell about uh, nt or nt minus 1 of a? nt minus 1 of a is less than or equal to some c log t by delta square of a. Correct? Some constant times log t by delta square of a. Correct? I just uh, took nt minus a onto the left side and brought the delta onto the right side. Okay? So what is it telling us? Which one? The small t is big. Big t is the uh, total time. Where? What was our t? Yeah, this is true for any time t. Because the, we, there is nothing that t is about t on the right side. So this is true for all t. That's what we got. So what uh, what does that mean? That means uh, nt of a is also bounded by this. Correct? So that means totally if an arm has a gap of delta of a, the total number of times you would have played that arm is inversely proportional to 1 by delta square. Uh, after that, uh, uh, in the good event, you will not be playing the term. Okay. If a ba if an arm has been played this many times, then it can never, that UCP of the term will never be better than the UCP of the best term. Okay. Huh? Then, uh, if you like the UCP of an arm A, will be greater than the UCP of A star only if this condition is true. Right? That's what we started, right? The an arm A, an arm A will be played only if uh, nt of A is less than or equal to this term. That means if nt of A is greater than or equal to this term, then there is no chance that that arm will be played. Now, who is telling Ame is the best term? No, we are always playing according to UCP algorithm. This is the algorithm we are doing. We are just analyzing that algorithm now. We are not doing anything about which arm to play based on our analysis. This is the algorithm. All that I am saying is if you have played that arm so many times already, then the UCP of that arm will never be the best UCP. Okay. Yeah, we'll continue from next class. Thanks.